Demi Lovato has okay. <laughs> put out a song called Swine, which is her pro-abortion anthem. And it came out on uh, the year anniversary of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So she's mourning the loss of Roe v. Wade. And in the music video, she is literally wearing a Handmaid's Tale style red cloak and yelling at a table of old white men who are signing off her rights to abort her child at nine months. And guys, it's The Handmaid's Tale is here. It's We're living in a nightmare reality where women can't kill their children when they're halfway out the canal. Um. <laughs> and comparing banning Bibles to... Um, yeah, she made a, a bizarre babies. reference in her uh, lyrics to uh, it, like banning abortion is the equivalent of banning the the Bible. She said, "Picture your faith, imagine your God, and even your holy Bible is suddenly banned. Do you understand? Doesn't that sound entitled? It's your book, but it's my survival." Well, luckily, the Constitution <laughs> protects people's rights to practice religion, but um, it doesn't it, protect me, the right to abortion. Wait, what? Uh, like, I mean, it's child sacrifice. It is their religion. Right. Yeah. Also, as she's yelling at this uh, group of old white men, there is a jury of sorts behind her of uh, drag queens and women with buzz cuts cheering her on and screaming at the camera like raging harpies. And uh, it, it, I looked at the uh, comments and they're all like... <laughs> this, like people arguing one person said this is absolutely crazy and then one reply said only because people aren't used to other people standing up for their rights birthing people oh god <laughs> um demi lovato also posted on her instagram uh an explanation of why she put this song out she said it's been one year since the supreme court's decision to dismantle the constitutional right to a safe abortion and although the path forward will be challenging this sounds like the intro sequence to avatar the last airbender <laughs> <laughs> we must continue to be united in our fight for reproductive justice i created swine to amplify the voices of those who advocate for choice and bodily autonomy I want this song to empower not only the birthing people of this country, but everyone who stands up for equality to embrace their agency and fight for a world where every person's right to make decisions about their own body is honored. And she is, for the next year, going to be donating all the proceeds from this song to pro-choice organizations did and she, also to her own Demi Lovato Foundation. Did she think that this was going to be, this is America? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, I for me, like this is America totally fell flat. Like, yeah, I no, didn't but it think that did was... have impact with people. Like it. Sure, but it it was just like, bro, it's not that deep. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, no, I agree with you, obviously, <laughs> but it did have an this impact. Is America. It was childish Gambino. Uh, a song about racism. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, but the video was it was massively successful. Like we were just talking about Eminem's um, "We as Americans" and "White America" yesterday, and like. Politically impactful songs are just a thing of the past. Mm. I I don't know if any of you guys remember Demi Lovato's Commander in Chief from 2020. Uh -uh. We as Americans wasn't even a U.S. release. They only released that in the in the U.K. because he talks about bad stuff happening to elected officials in that song. Mm. Oh, okay, interesting. I know some people don't like the like conservative rappers, but I think it's safe to say that Bryson Gray's music is a lot better than this song. It's also like, like it's Swine, not a great song. I, I've listened to the song a couple times now. It's not a good song. It's not even catchy. Like it would be one thing if I were like listening to it to hate watch, and then I like got annoyed realizing that it, like it's well made and mm -hmm. like catchy, and I'd be like kind of like bopping my head to it. But it's actually ass, and she's a good singer. <laughs> uh, she like re-released a couple rock versions of some of her other hits. Um, one of them was Heart Attack, and that was really good. But this was just not it. Um, and then Planned Parenthood posted a press release about it. They are not one of the organizations getting proceeds from the song. Uh, so they're kind of like the desperate ex-girlfriend who's like posting about it like, congrats, I'm so happy for you. Uh, but their, their <laughs> caption said, with constant attacks on sexual and reproductive health care, we are so grateful to artists like Demi Lovato, who is bold, courageous, and not afraid to speak through her art in support of bodily autonomy. 
And then all of the comments were like, you're misgendering they. Oh, gosh. They <laughs> always use the wrong pronouns they as always, they were applauding Demi Lovato. The for language they use to like calling it healthcare or like bodily, bodily autonomy. autonomy. I'm just tired of talking about it. Like uh, every uh, we, we talked about this when Roe v. Wade got overturned because so many pop stars were like making performative speeches about it on stage um and like it just makes me think of like Billie eilish being like fuck brett kavanaugh i got my last f word in there <laughs> like you're just dorky and you're not letting your career be just about like talent mm -hmm. you're hitching your wagon to a political message and it's not interesting and, and even the people that support this message still don't even like demi lovato because she's problematic <laughs> wait isn't uh didn't demi lovato recently like revoke the they them thing yeah because it was just so exhausting to correct everyone all the time on the uh, the correct pronouns and I did she like, thinks that also on government documents she should be able to identify as non-binary. I did like the oh articles that all like miss that mistook the quote on purpose that said like she finds them exhausting. I think we even did that where it makes <laughs> seem like she's saying something bad about it. It's just sad that like Demi Lovato is another one of these former child stars that was on Disney and had this kind of actually n at least nominally Christian public image. Selena Gomez the same mm. way she was like literally raised in a in a Catholic Miley Cyrus. household. Miley Not Cyrus. even nominally, like yeah, yeah. And even if they feel a certain way about abortion or any of these social issues privately, they're still too cowardly to come out and say it. Like, I I bet there are a lot of vocally pro-choice celebrities who in in their private lives are not pro-abortion at all. Yeah. Didn't um, even Taylor Swift say something about, like, as a Christian, you should be pro-abortion? When did she say was that? Was that, Brett, do you remember that? That, that was, sounds extremely familiar. Was that, like, after I, her I 2020 saw, political awakening or before? Wesley, can you research mm -hmm. this? I, I swear I saw an article, but um, I don't want to say it if it's not accurate we're like past the point in the culture where you even need to qualify those statements with as a christian because no one wants to hear about like public figures faith at all like, yeah if unless you don't they're renounce it unless entirely, they're twisting it into something that it isn't yes. at all taylor swift said that real christianity happen. is pro lg uh, pro lgbt and pro abortion i think i follow yeah. thanks like, for telling um, us taylor you're the new pope yeah. i follow yeah. like pro life twitter uh, pages yeah. that post news articles about this and i think i saw that on we one got of those. one from deuce boogaloo he said wanted to point out donald glover never said what this is america is about but that's uh, but that's open to interpret. I could easily make the case the song is about the degeneration of black culture rather than racism or gun control. Okay, but we know what it's about. <laughs> like, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what This Is America was talking about. It can also be know? about multiple things at once. What year was that? 2016, right? Okay. 2017? Yeah. That's I'm, the better route to do it anyways. Maybe to 2018. Not, to not beat you over the head with what it's actually about, but to let you make up the mind for yourself, even if the video is too on the nose, to actually believe that he's not telling you what it's supposed to be referencing. And I also just think that, like, with Demi Lovato's recent album called Holy F, where she's, like, on the album cover on this like dirty mattress that's shaped like a crucifix she's like openly blaspheming at this point you're not provocative if you are fitting society's expectations of you as a pop star like this is expected now and kim petrus is part of that sam smith is part of that mm -hmm. it I'll would be I'd more you. subversive or provocative to affirm mm. religious values or traditional values who was it who did that recently mm -hmm. the uh the former like model who's like i'm embracing my christian values we we're talking about it it wasn't amber rose wait like was it black china was it black china, I think that, it was black well, china. maybe yeah, yeah because she got her uh the cheek implants taken out yeah but she the, is like why do i know and, this yeah. like, but uh, you might have been see, on the show i, I today. think i, I was, understand what but, you're saying yeah. but i see it more as like a secondary subversive tactic to where this is there think are that black china is a grift no, no no i'm talking about like demi lovato and sam smith and oh, okay. like it's make a joke of what people like i guess me uh, think about Hollywood that there's really dark stuff going on. Like, oh yeah, it's really dark. We 
dress up like the devil sometimes and it's kind of making a novelty out of it. So if you right. poison the well, people are like, oh, that's all. It's hogwash. like the chance about like, we're here, we're queer and we're coming for your children. Mm. Obviously for them, that's an inside joke where mm. they're like, ha ha, the mm. stupid conservatives really think that we're coming after their children. But they don't, they're not in touch enough with where the culture is at to understand that we're not in the mood to joke yeah. about that. Yeah. Like we've had enough yeah. of, of joking about that because it's seriously happening. Right. Yeah, yeah, there's too much of like the actual uh, grooming and yeah. like the stuff being pushed in schools on kids to imagine, joke about it. Imagine you were like, uh, and then they were out there screaming, we're coming for your children, trying to make some kind of point yeah. that would be their version of yeah. the the rights version of talking about that with them one comment said if demi has a kid her kid's way of revolting will be to go to church <laughs> well yeah i mean that's uh, the babylon babylon b and um jp sears did a skit about that recently with brett cooper where he's like like she oh. comes out as christian to her family yeah. and they're like they're just like it's like coming out as a christian to my yeah. to my liberal family it's like that's they're like oh you know yeah I mean, that's uh, it is kind of like the the less over like the less hyperbolic version of saying conservatism is the new punk rock, which I always thought was cheesy sounding anyways. <laughs> but in a lot of ways, you know, like you will be looked back on as part of the counterculture here because everything that is mainstream is now so amorphous and bland that but yet somehow they all still believe that they're part of some type of rebellious movement as if laying on a bed shaped like a crucifix in some type of provocative position is somehow unique to the time period yeah. and as if the 80s didn't happen as if it's, there wasn't already a satanic panic a couple yeah. of decades ago it feels like we're at a breaking point and like they have felt like the counterculture for so long that now that it has become the more dominant mm -hmm. thing at least in media that the unsustainability of such lifestyles is what's causing this massive breakdown to where uh, it's the they're just in a denial about it that like you they think you think that's what it is you think it's like they're like see i never give them that like i never give them that benefit of the doubt like denial i always think that they're just too stupid to understand that they're they haven't caught on yet that they're they actually both things can be true like once that they know. think that they're they literally don't understand that like what you are now it's like when mountain dew and coca-cola and all of these companies are the ones supporting you yeah you can't see yourself any other way than well, it's the same way resistance in a person. moral in, a, in like the moral realm that it is like the uh economic realm where people that are like champagne socialists or just ignorant socialists benefit from the excesses of capitalism so that they can live that life until it all breaks down and then you no longer have the luxury to be what to believe what it is you believe you know what i mean like when there's no longer a very uh affluent society for you to live off very easy and claim to be a socialist the same way if you're in a society that is extremely like the moral fiber is intact it gives you the ability to be that counterculture uh icon and support yourself yeah. but once the the society becomes that it's Weimar Republic. It all falls apart. And yeah. then everybody reverts back to mm -hmm. like traditional values to have some sort of stability in their life. It's just all of those things depend on the structure and foundation of common sense. Honestly, like, as I was looking into this for today, I also saw another articles of uh, Demi Lovato saying that young people are hungry for a revival of emo music and emo culture which is why she's leaning into this like rock uh persona that she had during like the start of her music career but then when i see this i'm like i'm gonna actually go over here and listen to flyleaf and <laughs> like mind my own christian emo business i mean or if you depending on how much self-respect you have you could listen to machine gun kelly <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, like she's trailer park emo. It's yeah. not yeah. really hitting the mark for me. Um, mm. Another comment said, "These comments are the reasons why I believe from now on you need to have a certification to have a baby." And the reply said, "I honestly support this. If anti-choicers actually cared about lives, they would back this up instead of forcing people to be parents." We're quickly appro approaching like full support for a Chinese one-child <laughs> policy. Genuinely, <laughs> like these are these people are actual eugenicists. Well, then, and on what basis would someone be granted a certification to have a child anyway, if if they're 
you know, pro LGBT enough, mm-hmm. <laughs> or I else mean, you're going to get your kid taken away by the state. Planned Parenthood founded by eugenicist Margaret yes. Sanger. Like, yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> The um, I think that's just couched in a lot of nihilism for a lot of these people. It's like there's a, mm-hmm. I, I I it's funny. I, I talk a lot about there's nihilist propaganda and there's heavy um, overly positive propaganda and they're both kind of bad for you. In that like it's the stories that you see. It's like good news movement and I love all these stories that are like it's ridiculously positive. But then it gives you a false idea of what the world's actually mm-hmm. like, right? But then there's also extremely nihilist propaganda on social media that basically tells you like what is what does it matter if you have a kid? You're not going to be able to mo- make enough money to take care of your child anyways because the me- the minimum wage hasn't been raised in right. a decade and capitalist industries are destroying America. Let me go listen to this Demi Lovato there's song. There's this like pervasive. <laughs> idea that people that the birth rates are dropping because people are freer than they've ever been to live for themselves and find their own meaning and self-actualize when in reality it's because they feel paralyzed and that they can't have a family even if they did want to mm-hmm. that's a valid and it's and the that's same a valid thing argument. for like why why is gen z having less sex than previous generations it's not because they have like some kind of moral conviction about it it's because they for whatever reason, feel like they can't or they're not as socially connected as they would have been in a previous generation. That and gender roles have gotten extremely confused. Me Too turned everybody scared of interacting with the opposite sex in any way that could be misconstrued in any way, shape, or form. There's a ton of reasons that go into that. I also don't know if the stats on that bear out that it's just women, just men that are having less sex in Gen Z or if it's both of them, but... You know, a a lot of it is inspired by a culture in Hollywood where it's both unbelievably hypersexualized, but also unbelievably unsexy um, unsexy (laughs) in a lot of ways. Like in what they do promote tends to just be more from the vile mind of somebody like a Sam Levinson, where it's not promoting positive sexuality, not not even in a secular positive sexuality of somebody who's not religious and doesn't mind. Uh, sex before marriage, right? Like we're not talking about healthy relationships between characters on a show where they're just a couple that's together. And sure, there's other struggles that make up the brunt of the the conflict for the television show. But you don't even see a lot of positive examples of that in television and movies. And I'm not I'm not talking about from a religious perspective. I'm just saying healthy sexual relationships between couples. Like it mm-hmm. seems like most of what's focused on is either vile for the just for the simple fact of being vile or it's non-existent so i think a lot of people may not have like witnessed healthy examples of that growing up too yeah a lot of people's parents don't have a stable relationship or relationship at all Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.